Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, is one of the most important games ever made. Looking at videos of the game may convince you that it's nothing more than your typical everyday action-adventure title, but underneath its basic combat and boring puzzles lies a tragic tale about a young woman suffering from psychosis who embarks on a journey to bring the soul of her dead lover back to life. Hellblade is relentless in its grim depiction of psychosis and the effect it can have on people. I mean, some of the scenes in this game are downright uncomfortable to watch. The shadow hates Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself because there is no one left to do that for you. Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just Do like it. your sword. Go on. Come on. There. But I commend the developers for not shying away from dealing with difficult subject matter. Games like this need to exist even if the disturbing content may put a lot of people off playing the title. I've got to be honest, when I first played Hellblade back in 2017, I wasn't the biggest fan of the game. The combat felt incredibly repetitive, I hated the puzzles, and even though I was interested in the story, the gameplay was pissing me off to the point where I didn't want to continue playing anymore. However, shortly after I completed Hellblade, I began to do research into the game, and let me tell you, when I research something, I really research it. I spend hours finding every little juicy detail I can. Yeah, I think that's pretty good for the research. What I discovered about Hellblade from talking to people online about it made me realize how blind I really was to the themes of this game. So I went back and played it through a second time and my opinion completely changed. I now consider Hellblade a masterpiece. I discovered hidden depth in the combat system to the point where I now actually love the fighting in this game. I also learned to appreciate the puzzles and why they make sense within the context of the game. But to really get into the reasons I love this game will require me to talk about the story at length. So just know this video will contain spoilers for most of the game. So if you haven't played Hellblade yet, I'd highly recommend you do so before watching this video. Hellblade tells the story of Senua, a young warrior who believes that the goddess Hela can bring her dead lover back to life and so she sets off on a dangerous journey to reach Helheim, where Hela resides. Along the way, she encounters several different types of warriors and creatures, all looking to prevent her from reaching Helheim. Outside of combat, Senua will also occasionally have to find hidden symbols in the world to unlock certain doors, and she needs to do all this while listening to the voices in her head. she get through? She'll need to find another way. Truth is said. Find your own path. Yes, because Senua has psychosis, she hears voices constantly, and these voices mostly serve only to mock her, give her bad advice, or frequently remind her of how much of a failure she is. What are you doing? You're showing weakness. You're not a warrior, you're a disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword, pick it up, fight the darkness, fight it. Get her. 
get up. Get up and fight. When you first start Hellblade, the developers recommend you play the game with headphones, and I fully agree with them. This game needs headphones. Why? Well, to try and replicate what living with psychosis must be like, the voices in Senua's head can be heard from many different directions, at least when you play the game with headphones. I think Ninja Theory named this type of sound All Around Sound, and it works very well within the game. Sorry guys, I made a mistake. After doing some research, I discovered Ninja Theory didn't use All Around Sound. They instead used a technique called binaural audio. This allowed the developers to replicate three dimensional sound. I still think all around sound is a cooler name, and it rhymes for Christ's sake. Anyways, thanks to the amazing sound in this game, you really do feel like you're inside Senua's head at times, and it really helps you connect with her. You may even begin to get a sense of what a nightmare it must be for people living with psychosis. Because let's get one thing clear, when you have psychosis, the voices in your head almost never let up, and the same is true in Hellblade. Senua's voices almost never cease talking from the second the game begins to the very end, and it can be exhausting over the course of a few hours. But the most terrifying realization for me came a few hours into the game, when I realized I had actually just gotten used to the voices and had even began phasing them out when they were annoying me, just like a real person living with psychosis must do every day. Imagine getting used to living with psychosis. Imagine getting used to being constantly put down and made fun of by voices inside your own head every day. Well, the truly heartbreaking part is that Senua clearly has gotten used to the constant abuse, because she almost never reacts to the voices in her head during the game. I'm going to be honest, this game nearly broke me on multiple occasions. The shit Senua has to deal with almost never lets up. She is constantly being tortured from memories and hallucinations from her past. And yes, I said hallucinations. Did you know people with psychosis can also suffer from hallucinations? I didn't until someone recently told me. And some of Senua's visions are just cruel to watch. It's from these hallucinations that we learn more about Senua's past, and as you may have guessed, it wasn't a happy one. You find out that Senua's father both physically and mentally abused her from a young age, once he discovered that she had psychosis, which he saw as a curse. Senua's mother also had psychosis, but she was burnt alive because of it. Senua was isolated from the rest of the world, and wasn't allowed to interact with anyone because of her curse. As you can imagine, this would have a tremendously negative effect on any young person's mental health. However, one day Senua meets a young man named Dillian. At first, she's a bit apprehensive around him, probably because she truly believes she's cursed at this point, and that it's a bad idea for her to become close with anyone. However, a short time later the two of them fall in love and Senua runs away with him. This loving relationship ends in tragedy however, when Northmen invade Dillian's village and brutally murder him. So besides living with psychosis, Senua's entire life has also been filled with sadness and loss. It's hard to feel anything but sorry for her, and that makes you want to play the game true to its conclusion just so you can finally see Senua succeed and have some form of happiness in her life. But as you may have guessed, that's not how things pan out. But I think that's okay. Without spoiling anything, Senua's story isn't about having a happy ending. It isn't about having all your problems washed away. It's a story about acceptance. About accepting yourself and your life, just as it is. And I think everyone can relate to that, to some degree. So many of us struggle to just be content with the lives we have. We are always striving for something more. And while I don't personally suffer from psychosis, I think anyone can relate to Senua in some small way. While I can't audibly hear voices, I still have negative thoughts on a nearly constant basis. 
My thoughts frequently make me feel worthless and that I should just give up. I have friends who love me and yet I can't allow myself to become too attached to them because at any moment I feel like they could abandon me. My negative thinking is responsible for me hurting or pushing away so many people who love me and some days it can be too much to handle. And while depression has been a part of my life for the last 12 years, I feel like I'm finally starting to accept it. I realise that it's never going to go away and that's okay. That's life. If witnessing Senua's story has taught me anything, it's that life is about accepting the cards you've been dealt. Life can be shit and it's never fair, but even in our darkest moments, there is still incredible beauty to be found all around us. I think games like Hellblade teach us that it's okay to be different. Senua is a very well developed character. Yes, she has psychosis, but that's not her only trait. She's also brave, strong, can hold her own in a fight, and is incredibly determined. Senua is a tragic character, but also a beautiful one. She shows us that we do not have to be defined by our mental illnesses, that we are more than that, and that we all have the capability within us for amazing things. Please don't go I want you to stay I'm begging you please Please don't leave here I don't want you to hate For all the hurt that you feel The world is just illusion Trying to change you Please don't go I want you to stay I'm begging you please Oh please don't leave here I don't want you to change For all the hurt that you feel This world is just illusion Always trying to change you